Professionals in any field of work, what is the most ridiculous thing that anyone outside of your profession has claimed to know more about than you? Story one, I had a lady ask me what makes me qualified to tell her she needs to go to the hospital. I'm a paramedic. It's literally what I get paid to do. Edit, I work for a local government fire department that also provides ALS, advanced life support, ambulance services. We don't get paid per call. We work in a low-income area where no one has insurance and fewer pay their bills. The local hospital is going under and needs bailouts every year because they have so few paying customers and our government pesticides those bailouts. If I transport someone out, it takes money from my pocket and costs the taxpaying citizens. There are no incentives for me to transport someone to the hospital that doesn't need it. None. It takes me a minimum of 30 minutes to transport someone or five minutes tops to get a refusal of care. Trust me, if I say you need to go, you need to go. I know people can sometimes be reluctant to trust people when it comes to medical stuff because, especially here in the United States, medical bills are not small. They are terrifying and sometimes life-ruining. But boy... If someone who's a paramedic says that you need to go to the hospital, you should probably go to the hospital. Your life is worth more than any bill. Story two, I'll share with you something a nurse said. Well, you don't know what you're doing. Let me speak to your supervisor. I handed the phone to the pathologist and she ripped her a new one. So I'm a blood banker. Patient's blood type is A+, and the baby's type is O+. Nurse was insisting I made a mistake because there's no way A-plus mom could have an O-plus baby. I explained to her that mom's genotype could be A-O, and the dad could be another A-O, B-O, or O. Nope, I had to be wrong because there is no way. Final straw was, well, I had four years of college and I think I know more than you. To which I reply, so did I, but I got a master's and a graduate training program, so how about I'll let you talk to my boss? I know many great nurses, but once in a while, someone goes on a power trip and it makes me boil. Story 3. Got in an argument with a woman at Whole Foods. She wanted to buy grass-fed pork. There is no such thing. Grass cannot support a pig. They have to eat a heavy grain-filled diet. Woman did not believe me or my 10 years of farm and meat selling experience. Got to the point I told the woman I would ship her a piglet so she could raise it completely on grass and watch it die from starvation. I don't do demos at Whole Foods anymore. Try working there full time. A customer actually yelled at me because she saw me spraying a slicer down with a food grade sanitizing solution. She said I was putting chemicals in everyone's bodies and I was killing everybody. What I was actually doing was cleaning the damn slicer so I don't give my customers a food borne illness. But no matter what I said, I was wrong, and I should just clean it with water. My manager had to get involved, and he just told me, Congratulations, you've survived your first misinformed psycho customer. Keep cleaning the slicer. Story 4. I used to work in auto detailing. The one thing we never did was power wash the motor of a 90s model Jaguar. The electronics were sensitive, and the slightest amount of pressure would make the instrument panel light up like a Christmas tree. A dealer wanted us to clean this fleet of Jaguars, so we did, all nine of them. He checked the motors, and one of them still had a little dirt on it, and he got peed. He starts yelling at me, so I explain, Jer, the electronics are super sensitive. The slightest amount of high pressure could cause the instrument panel to light up. We have to hand wipe the motor with wet wags and cleaner. Sometimes we miss a spot. He calls his porter over and tells him to bring that car around to the repair side, and he'll clean it himself. He opens the hood, grabs a garden hose, and starts blasting the engine bay. See? Clean! I say to him, absolutely. He goes and starts the car, looks down, shuts the car off, gets out, and apologizes. I am a smart enough person to know that I know very little about cars and the computers that are in them. And so if someone who works on cars tells me not to do something to my car, I will not do that thing. I will absolutely believe them. Does this make me an easy mark for bad mechanics? Probably. Does this also mean that I wouldn't spray a hose into the engine of my car? Definitely. Story 5. A lady brought her husband in for elective surgery and he required general anesthesia. She comes in with an old dog-eared book and asks to have a meeting with the surgery team. We humor her and apparently she wanted specific anesthetic agents for her husband since she did research on all of them. 
All the agents she wanted were essentially removed years ago due to harsh side effects, or there were better medications. When I looked at her book, it was published in 1965. I don't know how I feel about people questioning doctors. The other day on here, a person told a story about how she got pertussis from some kids with anti-vax parents years and years ago. Her mom had to repeatedly shove it in the doctor's face until they finally tested her for it. She almost died. I've read countless stories about stuff like that. And then there are loons trying to talk about highly technical stuff like anesthesia with a 1965 book. Story 6. I'm a welder. One of the biggest hazards I face is UV damage to my eyes from the electric welding arc. That crap is incredibly bright, and just a glimpse of it can leave spots on your vision for hours at best. I once had some random guy try and tell me that only the initial flash is dangerous when you're welding, and that after you strike an arc, you can just stare at it without any trouble at all. Commercial construction diver. I just had a guy serving from a food truck tell me that he was welding on a dock in a lake, which was very dangerous because water becomes flammable under pressure. I told him that was very brave. Story 7. Being any medical professional and with literally anything. I had a patient once tell me she wouldn't do birth control because it caused AIDS. She was very polite about it and said she understood that us doctors weren't allowed to tell patients the truth. Okay, lady, enjoy your fifth baby. Another lady did not believe me at all when I told her seven C-sections was a dangerous amount and the eighth section could cause many complications to her and the baby. Well, they got seven out easily, so what's one more? Well, it takes them a lot longer and longer with each section, so it probably got harder with each one. Well, I was there, so I would know. <laughs> okay, folks, you really gotta stop questioning doctors like yeah if a doctor wants you to do some big like expensive thing that they say you know isn't necessary but oh you mean it could probably help or whatever you know yeah maybe question them on that or something but when a doctor's life when a doctor says please don't do this thing it could really kill it could kill you it could really affect you in a very bad way and you just go nah i think i'll be fine don't do that. No, listen to the doctor. Story 8. I work in legal compliance in the finance industry. I run into people doing illegal crap all the time. Claimed that it's the law. I can tell you how many pieces of legislation I have read cover to cover and how long I spent making sure I'm up to date with any legal changes in my field, and yet I still get this sort of thing. Me. Hi, a client has told me that she's been declined for a, for a loan from you. Her. Yeah, we can't lend to anyone who uses your company. Me. Sorry, what? Why not? Her. It's against the law. Me. Which law? Her. It's a new law. Me. Could you tell me the name of it so I can check this? Her. Hangs up the phone. Story 9. I used to work as an anthropologist for a tribe-run museum on protected Native American land. They had built a museum to display finds from excavations, spread knowledge about the history of their people, and also create a little revenue for their community center. Well, a local town, mostly white, upper-class families, took offense to our work. They claimed we were destroying the tribe's culture without any right by excavating. It culminated in a group sending the museum a letter where they basically said the tribe members were not educated enough to understand how their culture was being destroyed and were simply not intelligent enough to make decisions in regard to activity on their land. That went over real well. Wow! Just wow! That's... I, I, I just... I can't even with that. My mind is like twisting in discomfort and like these people sound like michael scott from the office times 10 the absolute lack of awareness and just offensiveness good lord Story 10. After leaving a ring with our jewelry for over three months, and after countless calls from us asking her to kindly come and collect her jewelry, finally turning up and telling us, this isn't my diamond. You swapped my diamond. My diamond was completely different to this. She then proceeds to throw the biggest tantrum I've ever seen, refusing to listen to reason, disregarding our store's 75-year reputation. Thankfully, we keep meticulous records, including the weight of the ring, any flaws in the customer's diamond, and diamond measurements. 
Eventually, she realized that it actually was her diamond. We got a sincere and heartfelt apology for all the hassle she put us and our other customers through. Just kidding, she left in a huff. Story 11, not me, but my dad. My dad's an ex-Navy and has served on a whole bunch of ships, including HMS Antelope. He spent two and a half years on that ship. My uncle, his sister's husband, tried to lecture my dad on how the Antelope carried nuclear weapons, amongst other BS things that my dad knew for a fact were not true. Dad asked uncle how he knew such info. Uncle claimed to have seen the probably highly classified blueprints for the ship. My uncle was an effing floor layer. Story 12. Optician. Woman brings her son in for exam. Both have extremely high minus prescriptions. Mom is okay with older son's prescription and glasses order, but is mad about younger son's prescription. She wants to order his glasses, but wants his prescription changed to be less than the doctor's prescription. I told her I can't do that because I can't change the doctor's work. She's mad because she thinks the prescription is too high for him. His eyes are like my eyes, and my prescription didn't change this much for my exam last year, so I don't want his that high. <laughs> yeah, sure, lady. Let me just uh, let me just change your son's eyes really quick. You got like a spoon or something so I can just get in there, shuffle him around a little bit? I I'll fix him up for you, no problem. We'll make sure that your son's eyes are just like yours. That's how it works. Story 13. As a nurse bringing medication to a patient and the family member who's obviously a graduate of WebMD University asks, did the doctor order that? Because I've read that an overdose of that medication might cause mild itching. Of course, the correct answer is, yes, ma'am slash sir, this was ordered by the doctor after he or she carefully considered all the options. The answer I want to give is, nope, the janitor ordered this, but he seemed pretty sure of himself when he did it, so we'll probably be okay. Story 14. One Sunday, a visiting nurse came up to the Oregon Loft uh, service and told me that she thought it was reprehensible that people had to be put to work pumping the organ during services instead of paying attention to what was happening in the church. I told her that the practice of hand-pumping organs mostly ended with the advent of the electric blower many decades ago. She actually disputed this until I took her to the basement to see the machine busy at work supplying wind to the pipe above. It took me a lot longer <laughs> than I'm happy to admit to realize that they were talking about church organs and not a loft full of human organs because it said a visiting nurse. And so I thought, I thought a hospital had a loft where they just kept extra organs. Because, you know, that's how they must do things, right? I was trained in the medical profession as a certified nursing assistant at one point in my life. <laughs> Story 15. I'm a biologist, and many years of arguing, I have yet to meet someone who both denies evolution and also actually understands it. <laughs> My wife was homeschooled all her life and swore up and down she didn't believe in evolution. One night we were talking and I explained it to her and she goes, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I can believe that. And she believed it ever since. Blows my mind how some people just aren't educated on these things. God, I remember having debates with people in high school who are like, Oh, if evolution's real, then why do we still have monkeys? You know, if we evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And it's like, Tell me you don't understand evolution and how it works without saying it, you know? Story 16. I'm a family lawyer. Can't even tell you how many times I've had a client argue with me about child support. Client gets mad because their brother, friend, coworker, whoever had a much lower child support payment, so it isn't fair. And obviously, I effed up with the calculation. No, jackbutt, yours is higher because you make more than your friend and your kids are in their care. I've been doing this for many years and the calculation is done by a computer. I'm not using tea leaves and an abacus to calculate your support payment. Story 17. I'd like a hotel room. I'm sorry, we're sold out. Yes, but you always keep one of your best suites in case someone important comes in. No, I don't. So what would you say if President Obama came in right now? I would suggest he go back to his home, which is less than a mile away. No, people, I don't keep my best suite set aside for VIPs. If someone wants to pay me money, I sell it to them. That's how our business works. 
You don't find grocery stores hiding produce just in case. Hotels don't either. Story 18. I buy and sell junk for a living. Every day is a constant struggle with buyers who have been in this for years and know all the prices. You can't argue with market set prices on eBay, but old men can argue that it's sold for so much for in 1980. I bought this computer for $3,000 15 years ago. It surely must be worth $2,700, right? It really does amaze me just how much some old people think their old computers must be worth. Uh, I remember an uncle had like an old Packard Bell, had to be at least like 15 years old or something like that. And he wanted to try and sell it for like $1,000 when... Thousand dollars at the time would have bought you a pretty decent gaming computer. And I had to tell him, like, dude, my phone is more powerful than your computer, and my phone wasn't even really a smartphone. Story 19. I've done research in both the Arctic and Antarctic. Someone told me that the polar bears hunt the penguins. I told him that they don't. He angrily replied that, yes, they do. Polar bears only live in the north, and penguins only live in the South, so... Story 20. I work as a pharmacist's assistant, and my boss, a chemist, was once on the phone to a woman who insisted that she take cursumin to heal her pneumonia and not antibiotics. Cursumin is the active ingredient in turmeric, a well-known natural anti-inflammatory, but it's not going to do crap when your lungs are filled with black liquid and you're halfway to death. Story 21. I'm an airline pilot. I've had a flat earther get mad at me for not telling the truth about seeing the edge of the world. I honestly thought people made that crap up. Retired airline pilot, I had a guy get upset with me for surely having seen UFOs and my unwillingness to admit it due to a code of silence. Still waiting for a chemtrail collusion accusation. Story 22. I'm a dentist. There are quite a few people who think fluoride in toothpaste or tap water is going to kill you. These are usually the same people who come in chugging Mountain Dew and smell like cigarettes. That's so stupid. Fluoride in the water is for the government mind control program. Exactly, folks. Get your heads out of your butts and realize that fluoride is controlling your mind and birds are all just government spy drones. Everything is so obvious when you just stop for a moment and think about it. Jeez. Story 23. Recently graduated from medical school, far from an expert, and now my family suddenly has a wealth of medical knowledge. Most recently, they've decided that almost any illness can be cured with laxatives. <laughs> oh. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.